Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zang here, and today I'm bringing you Game 2 against Ezreal, also known as Jonathan Evans. We played a best of 3 set recently at a VGC 14 tournament, that was pretty local, and he actually ended up winning Game 1, which I uploaded yesterday. In Game 1, it basically came down to my Got to Tell and Rotom Heat against his Scizor and Mega Tyranitar, and I actually nearly clutched out the win with continuous tickles and will-o'-wisps, but Rotom Heat missed an overheat against Scizor, which might have been able to seal up the game for me, so I knew I had to adjust a bit more in Game 2. I didn't like the kind of passive plays I was making in the first game. I wasn't, you know, really doing many offensive attacks, so I basically swapped out the Got to Tell and the Mawile. Got to Tell really did not do very much in the first game other than set up Trick Room, so I decided to go full offense. Uh, Kangaskhan, Rotom Heat, Hariyama, and Salamence, which I really liked. Mawile is a great Mega Evolution, but I don't like playing with it too much outside of Trick Room. Kangaskhan feels just a bit safer, especially against Pokemon like Ludicolo and Tyranitar. So without further ado, let's just get into the battle. Now, going in, I know that Tyranitar is his Mega Evolution, I know that Hariyama is essential in this, because Hariyama has an excellent matchup against Mega Tyranitar, uh, namely because Tyranitar really only carries Rock Slide and Crunch as its main means of offense. So, I know if I can, you know, make some smart positioning uh, in terms of momentum and switching, uh, and just, you know, make sure that I always have the opportune matchup in any given scenario, it can really play out well for me, and this is exactly why I brought Kangaskhan to this match. So the first turn he leads with Scizor and Ludicolo against my Kangaskhan and Rotom Heat. My Kangaskhan actually does not carry Fake Out, so on the first turn I just straight up go for the double edge onto Ludicolo and the Thunderbolt onto Scizor. Uh, I had a feeling Scizor would either switch out or protect, so Thunderbolt felt like the safer play. Did not want to get to minus two special attack too early on, especially on the first turn. You see, he does make the switch into Salamence, which is actually a really smart switch because with Intimidate, Kangaskhan is actually not able to knock out the Ludicolo. Does around 80% with the double edge. Thunderbolt goes before Ludicolo and does around 45% to that Salamence. He goes for the Skull, not on the Rotom Heat, but on the Kangaskhan, and I was perfectly fine with that until he got the Burn off. So now, um, kind of frustrated because Kangaskhan is at minus 1 from the Intimidate, and the Burn, you know, adds just decreases attack even more. This following term, I'm kind of anticipating a double protect into the Rotom Heat, since Rotom Heat, he definitely wants to KO, so his Scizor has a better matchup. And I do call the target into there, uh, Salamence. Targets the Rotom Heat with a Dragon Pulse, I get a free double edge into Salamence, making sure that it's in Thunderbolt range off, and the Scald also goes into the Protect, so I'm really happy there. Now this following turn, I'm kind of getting the feeling that Salamence is going to switch out, because he knows that I have Hariyama in the back, and uh, he doesn't have a really good way to beat Hariyama, but Intimidate is always a decent way to just, you know, decrease his attack. Uh, so I actually just double edge the Ludicolo, and this plays out perfectly. He switches out into Tyranitar, I get the free double, ge double edge off, and even though I'm burned and at minus one from Intimidate, I still pick up the knockout, which I was really, really pleased to see. Ludicolo, of course, not really the most defensively built Pokemon. So I take a bit of recoil damage there, I'm going to faint from the burn and sandstorm, but Kangaskhan's done his job, knocked out Ludicolo, which was a huge threat to my Rotom Heat, and now Kangaskhan is going to faint from the burn. However, because I know what he's got in the back, you know, I can just safely bring in my Hariyama, uh, and either Scizor or Salamence, neither of them give me too much trouble. So he brings in Scizor, which I'm even happier to see, uh, because... Now I can actually play a bit safer, I'm actually anticipating a Protect coming out of that Scizor, and the one win condition I see from Ezreal's end at this point is him setting up a Dragon Dance with Tyranitar. So I fake out the Tyranitar to prevent any potential Rock Slide flinches or Dragon Dances and go for the Will-O-Wisp. Instead of close combating, I, you know, I didn't want to take the chance of uh, him flinching me with Rock Slide, so I get the fake out off, he flinches, and Will-O-Wisp does connect with Mega Tyranitar, and that's huge for me. Scizor also protected, which I kind of anticipated, so that's really good for me, as now the game is, you know, still 3-3, but I burned his Mega Evolution, and I still have an excellent lead matchup, or just, you know, uh, positioning on the field. Surprisingly, he doesn't go for any switches here, but maybe that's because he's just accepted defeat at this point, or he doesn't want me to predict his Scizor switching out again like I did in the first turn of the game. He just goes for the Bullet Punch onto the Tyranitar, and Tyranitar goes for Rock Slides. Uh, of course, Rock Slide is always a really clutch move so with a couple of flinches you can still pull through with the battle but fortunately enough Rotom Heat gets the overheat off uh, and that was definitely the more important one because I just needed to get the KO onto Scizor. Uh, I, of course I still have Salamence in the back but Salamence with Choice Specs does not really like facing Salamence with Choice Scarf. Uh, but both of my Pokemon attack through the Rock Slide this turn fortunately not getting flinched and I pick up two knockouts on the four times weak Pokemon Salamence, excuse me, Tyranitar and Scizor. Uh, so now I'm up 3-1 and there's really nothing much 
my opponent can do against my entire team. Uh, so that ended up playing out pretty well. The Kangaskhan's call was really good. Not bringing Gothitelle was really good. Uh, Tyranitar did basically nothing, and I was fortunately able to burn it before it, you know, it, able to get any Dragon Dances or any attacks off. And you see that minus two from Mega Tyranitar Rock Slide does not do too much to a bulky Rotom. So he goes for the Dragon Pulse there, and even at minus one, Hariyama's able to take it, and I'm able to knock out the Salamence with a Thunderbolt and knockoff combination. So I managed to take this game, uh, not too convincingly, but still I'd say it was the first game was a lot closer. So I was glad to see that after I switched out my strategy, it uh, paid its dividends. Uh, and so yeah, uh, it's, you know, really important to consider that going into game three, which I'll be uploading soon. But I hope you guys enjoyed game two. It's definitely really different from the first game and how that played out, given the passive plays in that game and the more offensive plays made in this one. Of course, leave a like if you enjoyed the battle, and I'll see you next time. Peace.